Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Thank you for joining me. Sorry that I haven't made a video recently, but I was busy with some less interesting, boring stuff just to keep the pot cooking. But um, at least on today's video, we're going to continue working on this little Austin. Uh, the first thing we're going to do is take off all the plastics and see how that looks. And then I'm going to start by installing the fenders and so on. What I did was I bought some of these little rubbers that's going to go in between the fenders. Bought a handful of new nuts and bolts and washers. And what we're going to do is we're going to install these fenders and the front ones and so on. And just um, start putting the little car back together again. And then from there on maybe we can go into the inside and do the floors and so on. But any case, let's continue. Guys, I just want to bring you up to speed with what I'm doing here. My plan is to paint it with a matte black. So just painting it black still leaves it with a lot of nasty marks. So what I'm going to do instead of just painting it is I'm going to spray it with this stone chip paint that you usually put underneath your car's um, fenders and so on. So I'm going to paint it with that rather than normal paint. And I think that will solve my issue with this unevenness. And, um, and make the inside of the bonnet also look quite snazzy. So let's do it. Okay, so um, that's done. Um, it didn't come out too bad. It's quite nice actually. It's not perfect, but it's okay. I'm just gonna wait for it to dry and then we can put it back on the car and continue with the other work. Okay, so while I wait for the bonnet to dry, I'm gonna just as well paint the undersides of these fenders. I'm just gonna mask up the undersides of the pretty parts and I'm just gonna scuff up the insides of these fenders with some scotch guard and um, then I'll paint it with the same stone chip that I used on the firewall and on the underside of the bonnet just to give it a nice finish and also protect it against sandblasting and so on. So let's do it. Okay, so now that's done. Now I can put the bonnet back on. But uh, you guys wouldn't believe how hard it was painting the underside of these fenders and filming it without having my butt crack sticking out. So uh, apologies for that in advance. But in any case, let's continue. Okay, so this is exciting. I have finished installing all of the painted parts on this car. Now I can continue to the next step of this restoration and that is the inside. I'm going to start by um, installing the wooden floor, but I have come up with another plan. I think that I'm going to be using this plywood because it's nice and sturdy and strong. Um, and I like the wood grain so much that I think I'm going to try and fit it there 
and then seal it off and sand it down and seal it nicely and maybe I can install it and not have to put a solid carpet in the car just have the wood there and stain it nice and dark and do the same on this outside as well both sides if it doesn't work then I'll just cover it with carpet as the car used to be Okay guys, so I got all the pieces cut to size. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to take everything out, flip it over, and then I'm going to paint the underside with some of this deck sealer. What I like about that is that it's a penetrating sealer and also is UV resistant and so on. And then I'm going to flip it over the right side up again and I'm going to sand it down with some sanding paper and my orbital sander. Just get the corners nice and give it a nice once over um, on the top of the wood and then I'm going to give it a coat of that sanding or that deck sealer and when that is dry I'm going to use some steel wool just to rub it down get rid of anything sticking out particles sticking out and so on and then I'll give it another coat a second coat and hopefully by then or by the third coat it'll be nice and shiny and finished properly and then all that will remain is to assemble it again Okay guys, so whilst I'm waiting for the second coat to dry, I'm going to talk to you guys about sanding and polishing the paintwork on this little car. Um, as you know, I painted it outside and when you paint a car outside, there are always some dust particles and blemishes that's going to um, make your paintwork not look so good, uh, no matter how hard you try. But that's not a problem. If you're going to sand it and polish it, you can really make your paint job turn out and look very very good afterwards um, so I just want to show you guys what I'm talking about this little dust particles on the video when you when you're looking from here it all looks quite good but if you go close up you'll see there are some dust particles and blemishes on the paint especially with the reflection of my LED light you can see these little dust particles and um, and if you sand and polish this paint, you can really get it perfect or close to perfect. So when you sand and you polish a car, some of the things that you're going to need is a fine grid sanding paper. I use a thousand grit water sanding paper, some spray water, and um, then I just sand everything down with the sanding paper. Make sure there's a lot of water so that there aren't any dust particles scratching your paintwork. And then I used a cutting paste like this L100 cutting paste that I'm using here to polish it even further. And I use this little polishing tool, even though it looks like a grinder, it's not a grinder. 
But the main difference being that this one has got variable speed whereas the grinder does not so don't use a grinder to try and polish your car and after that I just polish it with some normal car polish and I usually also just when everything is done give everything a nice spray with some um, upholstery cleaner it just um, brings out the, the shine on the new paint that's what I've found so if you've got a run on your paint and uh, you want to take it out I don't have a run on the paint luckily this time but if you've got a run over here for instance and you want to take it out um, it's quite easy um, all you need to do is use a sanding block with some sanding paper but don't use a big block like this because you're going to be sanding around the spot as well as on top of the part that you want to on top of the paint that you want to remove so I just use a small little block like this and um, put some sanding paper around it and then you can just very carefully with a lot of water just sand down that part over there and if you take your time you can easily remove a run and make it as if it was never there um, just being careful not to sand around the sides too much so that the paint won't go off and if you've done that then you can sand the whole thing again and it will be perfect afterwards okay so i'm just going to attempt to do this small little part over here and try and capture it on video so that you guys see what i do i'm going to sand it down with a thousand grit sanding paper then i'm going to use my cutting grid to polish it further and then i'm going to polish it with some car polish and then i'm going to put some of that upholstery cleaner on top of that and this part's probably going to look a whole lot better so let's see how it goes Well, as if I would have got was in the duck. Oh, that's the last nice. You need the yellow up there. Yep. You need the four of them. So yeah, now this side looks much, much better compared to the other side. Um, you can even see some streaks there still on that side. But this side looks much better. I can still see some very, very minor um, sanding paper streaks. But I'm going to co continue with the whole car with this whole same process. Sand it down and then meticulously start polishing with my machine every corner and every part of this car till there are no more streaks left and I'm going to polish it by hand and um, yeah that's the basic principle that's how you sand and polish that's how I sand and polish a car so that's it now I can continue with the other work
Wow guys, this is looking snazzy. I like what I see. Um, so I'm done with the wooden floor now. I'm not going to mount it permanently yet because I first want to put some vinyl or carpet material over that part there and over here as well. And I want to first put the carpet in and then put the wood on top so it will help keep it in place. And I also want to put some carpets underneath there by the firewall. But I think this is going to look beautiful when it's done. Okay guys, so that is it for this video. Thank you for joining me. I think we've made a whole lot of progress on this car with this video. I think it'll maybe be two more videos from now and the car will be done uh, if everything goes according to plan. And then we can take it for a spin and see how she drives. Cheers!